Wintertime in East Meredith in the northwest foothills of the Catskill Mountains brings cold weather, snow, and ice to Hanford Mills Museum. For generations, people have found ways to capitalize on this season. Ice was a commodity and a resource in times before widespread electricity and mechanical refrigeration. Farmers used it to keep their dairy products cool during the warm summer months. In homes, people used ice boxes to keep food fresh, much like refrigerators and freezers do today. But where does ice come from? How do we get from water to this frozen pond? And what makes ice so valuable? Ice is full of energy waiting to be released. To understand why ice has been so beneficial for humans, we need to look at its chemistry. The chemical formula for water is H2O, which means one molecule of water is made up of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. What is special about water molecules is that they are polar, like a magnet. One side of the molecule is positively charged, and the other side is negatively charged. This characteristic makes water a particular sticky substance, because water molecules are not only attracted to each other, but to other polar substances, like salts. This polarity causes water to behave uniquely in each of the three states of matter, gas, liquid, and solid. In each of these states, water molecules are consuming and releasing energy as bonds form and break between them. As a gas, or water vapor, molecules are moving around rapidly, moving towards and away from each other, filling whatever space is available to them. Like a gas, the molecules in liquid water are constantly moving, but as they move, they are forming and breaking hydrogen bonds with each other. When these bonds are formed, energy, in the form of heat, is released, and when they are broken, they absorb energy. When in the form of a solid, or ice, water molecules bond together in a hexagonal arrangement, which rigidly holds molecules away from each other. By not being densely packed, ice has a unique property of being less dense in its solid form than in its liquid form. This is what causes ice to float on water. All the space between the molecules in ice also makes it a great insulator. When a body of water freezes, it typically does not freeze all the way to the bottom. Instead, a layer of ice forms on the surface, and this layer protects the water underneath from the cold air, allowing organisms like fish to survive in frigid winter conditions. The best ice to harvest looks like this, nice and clear. This means that the ice froze quickly and stayed frozen. If ice instead looks like this, white and cloudy, that means it is filled with lots of little air bubbles and not as structurally sound. This ice was formed by water that froze and melted in succession, which can often happen during warmer winters without consistent freezing temperatures. Cloudy or snowy ice needs to be thicker in order for it to be safe to walk on. This is the ice house at Hanford Mills. It has two walls, one inside the other, with spaces in between for air. This helps to insulate the structure or stop heat from moving from one object to another. The top of the ice house has a vent, so when the hot air rises, it can escape instead of being trapped inside with the ice. The bottom of the ice house has a drain to let any melted water out. As ice blocks are loaded in during the ice harvest festival, they are covered in sawdust with even more insulation. Each of these features of the ice house protects the blocks, preserving them until the summer. Everywhere that ice was harvested, there were ice houses. From big warehouses for commercial use, to small sheds like the one at Hanford Mills. Ice was a valuable resource to the people here in East Meredith and across the region.